is Darren Williams and we're going to test several solvents and come up with a custom blend targeted for a particular application. Let's run down to the lab so we can collect some data. This is the table that we're going to be restoring. We're going to use the Hansen solubility parameters to select solvents that will pull the paint off. First I'd like to remove the rust and any of the removable dust and particles from the surface so that we are actually testing the surface of the paint and not just the dried rust and, and, and dust and dirt that's collected on this item. Okay, after removing all of the form matter on, on top of the table, we have a patch of paint that we can test right here in this region. So we're actually testing the paint polymer and not just the bits of rust that remain on the other parts of the table. So we will do our solvent testing here to determine the effective Hansen solubility parameters of the surface that we're trying to remove. To ease in the analysis, I've set the solvents up in alphabetical order according to a three-letter abbreviation. And I'm going to put a drop of each solvent onto the paint in the same semicircular pattern in order so that I can keep track of the solvent effects. This goes quite quickly as you'll see. Okay, I've written the results on the table. You can see the spots that had the most interaction were MEK, methanol, NMP, um, a little bit of cleaning happened with hexane and ethanol and propylene carbonate, but you could see a little bit of cracking with the MEK, some with the NMP and some with the methanol. You can't see it on the video, but if you look closely the uh, paint cracked just a slight amount with just a few seconds of exposure to these solvents. Toluene, which is normally a very good solvent for paint, and xylene did almost nothing. Now that we have the data, we head to the bat cave. Now for a look at the Hansen solubility parameter in practice software. I will be analyzing the data that we just collected using the Hansen solubility parameters in practice software First we need to create a new list of solvents. The master list of solvents of over 10,000 solvents is here on the right and we will use this search window to search for our solvents. So first we begin with acetone. Just double click the left bar and it will add that solvent to our list. Next acetonitrile. Acetophenone, okay so that is our list of solvents now we need to go through and put a score on every one of them according to their interaction that we have on the video Six is no interaction, one is it completely dissolves. We really saw very little interaction with the solvents, so most of our scores are going to be sixes with a few fives. Now there's a disclaimer here, this is a fairly subjective assignment. What I'm essentially doing is, is giving a distinguishing mark between the solvents that interacted some versus the solvents that had no interaction at all. Now that I have these scored, I can come up to this box and define the inside as five. So it's going to say that MEK, methanol, and NMP are my good solvents. Let's calculate the Hansen solubility parameters. 
methanol is quite often a, an anomalous solvent. Here is methanol. As you can see down here from the two-dimensional plots, methanol is so much higher in the hydrogen bonding case, but it's such a small molecule that many times it interacts with substances anomalously. You know, it has such a high hydrogen bonding parameter that you would think that if it interacted that the material had a high hydrogen bonding Hansen solubility parameter. But notice that ethanol, which is very close to methanol in its hydrogen bonding parameter, had no interaction at all with the paint. So we will assume that the paint has Hansen solubility parameters that are closer to NMP and MEK than methanol. Okay, now let's look at the solvent optimizer for optimizing a blend of solvents to target the coating that we want to remove. If you notice, the solvent optimizer has quite a few solvents in it. I've deleted quite a few of the default solvents because we don't have them in the lab. So these are the solvents that we do have in the lab. And now we can find, by sorting by distance, the best single solvent. But first we have to type in the Hansen solubility parameters from the optimized fit. So this is the Hansen solubility parameters of our coating. 17, 12.34, 4.24, and a radius of 4.3. So sorting these by distance, we see that NMP is the best solvent, MEK is the second best. This is natural because those are the two solvents that we scored as good. Cyclohexanone is showing up as the third best solvent. So if we want to know what a good mixture of NMP and MEK would be, we can Let's take find these the blends from the solvent optimizer down to the lab. Here are the results of the blend prediction. Now we don't want to completely waste all of our solvents on unsuccessful blends, and so we'll be making up our solvent blends in these four mil vials. Then we'll do a test similar to what we did with the pure solvents, and then when we find the most successful blend, we will make up a larger batch so that we can clean the whole table. Okay, I've been trying what I call the white soap test. When I have a blend, I, I saturate a chem wipe place it in contact with the material, the coating, and I place an inverted watch glass over the top and wait about five minutes to ten minutes. This keeps the more volatile components from evaporating and then after ten minutes or so you can lift the saturated wipe to see if there's any effect on the coating. I can see blistering of the paint in several places and so it looks like that this blend of, of NMP, MEK, and methanol is going to be a good blend. The typical procedure used many times is just to put the solvent onto the paint and begin rubbing with a chore boy. This does remove the paint down to the metal. However, it uses quite a bit of solvent. And as you can see, the exposure to the solvent is great. And a large amount of solvent evaporates. There is a better way using the wipe soak method. Okay, the large version of the wipe soak method is to use a saturated paper towel with the blend covered with a sheet of aluminum foil and held in place by an old textbook. Works great. The bottom tray was not as rusty and one wipe soak session took it all the way down to the bare metal for about 60 or 70 percent of the surface. So you can see that are the, that's the results of one 10 minute soak with our blend. That paint surface was unbroken before I started and I peeled the, uh, the, wipe, the soaked wipe off and then rubbed with a dry paper towel and it went and some with the chore boy and it went all the way down to the metal and this is a very shiny metal surface almost no rust our custom blend had most of the components of lacquer thinner but it did not have the butyl acetate or the butanol and 
so I thought I would try lacquer thinner from the store uh, and compare it to the performance of our custom blend. It's been soaking on a fresh portion of the dried paint for about 20 minutes. Looks like it's able to remove the orange portion of the paint, but the white paint is still there. It's no better or no worse than our custom blend. Okay, when it comes to removing material, few things are as good as the paint scraper. I can take this down to bare metal, but the problem is it mars the surface. So if you are worried about the surface, then you probably need to use a more gentle method, such as the paint strippers that we've been working on. Uh, developing here. But having a thick, old, crusty layer of paint, it's much easier to remove that with the scraper than it is with the solvent in some cases. The overall process of wipe soap cleaning and, and scraping took about two and a half days, probably 15 hours of work, and although there was a lot of scraping, there was not a lot of pressure needed to be applied the paint released from the metal surface and just needed very little pressure from the scraper. The solvent blend was necessary because the scraping of dry paint required quite a bit of pressure. It was also nice to see that our proprietary blend or targeted blend was able to perform better than a commercial blend for paint removal. We're finished with what we can do on this whole table. Uh, this is the bottom plate of the table, the little second shelf, and it is down to the bare metal with the exception of some of the spots in the middle that had rust, where it looks like the paint and the rust layer have uh, been intermingled. And that illustrates an interesting point. If you want a coating to stick to a surface, you really need entanglement of the polymer and the surface oxide layer. Well, this is an example of what we have. These, this area was soaked in N-methylperolidone, MEK, methanol, all of the different solvents in our blends, and it removed the polymer from the top, but yet the places where the polymer was entangled in the oxide layer still remain. The top shelf, which was out in the sun, was much more rusty. You see, it was much more difficult to clean. Here it is, it's still a brownish color, it's still a rusty color. Uh, we have entangled paint polymer in the oxide layer. The really only hope of getting this down to clean bare metal is sandblasting. But we have removed the major portions of the paint, the 30 year old paint, using our targeted solvent blend. The blend that we developed using the Hansen solubility parameters performed better than lacquer thinner, which is a, a very good uh, solvent blend to use to remove this type of paint uh, but we were able to match the performance of lacquer thinner and in my opinion even improve upon that formulation but there's really no hope of removing the polymer that's been entangled with the oxide layer and so you need to remove the oxide layer and the polymer together with a uh, bead blasting or sand blasting uh, grinding would take too long and would remove too much metal so uh, I believe you can come at this with a sandblaster and get it down to the bare metal if you needed to. I think we're going to uh, do one more final wipe down and then we're going to paint this surface.